purpose of this conference, and when I started working with Anne about what we wanted to do with this conference, um, and particularly this one, as opposed to the one that is run in the fall, um, is that we really wanted to create one that would promote uh, dialogue. This is a small group. That is not by accident, that is by design. We also sort of set up the type of criteria of not only who you want on the panels, but who we want in the audience. Uh, Hubert Berner, and I'm going to just run off some names of who are here, who are not on the podium. And that's, by the way, calling you guys out to participate uh, when the time comes. But Hubert Berner of TVM, a very uh, important life science uh, firm, is here. Uh, Rafi Hofstein, I believe, is here somewhere from Mars Innovation, the CEO of Mars Innovation. Uh, Terry McCool from Lilly Canada. And, um, you know, I don't, there's things that I don't, I'll leave it to them to announce, but there's some very interesting things going on there related to venture capital. Um, Randall Chase is here somewhere, I saw him. Um, Randall is the chair of, you know, perhaps, I mean, these are words that don't go together often in Canada, a highly successful emerging company that's on the public markets. Um, and Medicago fits that bill and, you know, uh, <clears throat> in addition to uh, support here, has built a global presence that's well recognized. Um, so the audience in this conference is as important as the panelists. We really want that interaction. Uh, there's also, we've tried to put in place um, as many breaks as we could while still having panels so that you could meet each other. Because we do have people, you know, have come here from, we were running the list this morning, uh, New York, uh, Palo Alto, uh, San, uh, Washington State, uh, Paris, Boston. You know, this is, while small, a good, strong international contingent. New York, I have to mention that because I'm looking at Barbara Dalton and I want to make sure I didn't miss that. Um, now, just a few words about context, and then we will get on. The, the genomics and life sci uh, science sector in Canada, we all know that it faces a bunch of challenges and a bunch of economic challenges. Uh, Biotech Canada, uh, uh, with PwC, did some research um, and among their constituency. Um, and felt, you know, the most challenging issues, they said, um, were raising capital over the next few years, was raising capital either in the form of equity capital or in doing uh, transactions uh, with big pharma. Um, I, I sort of take a different perspective on that personally, on the raising capital as a major issue. And, you know, I'll, I'll start the process of putting something out you know, from a personal perspective so we can all get into it. Um, I regard it more as a symptom than the underlying challenge. I think we, you know, we all know, and for the reasons uh, that Minister Goodyear gave us, that if we advance this industry, good things happen in Canada and good things happen to world health. So why is capital so scarce? Those are the questions we have to go after, is why is uh, the capital um, uh, not beating a path to our doorstep. Uh, and over the course of this conference, we're going to have an opportunity uh, to address, uh, try and identify some of those underlying challenges. Um, in that effort, I, when I was at the J.P. Morgan conference in January, I conducted a very unscientific poll of about seven or eight people um, and came up with the three questions that we have uh, and the three hypotheses that we have today that we're going to ask, aside from whatever else they talk about, each panel to address and try and get at those questions from the perspective of, you know, uh, fund of funds managers, venture capitalists, investment bankers, and operating companies. But, you know, one hypothesis was, well, simply, science has hit a plateau where there's lots of stuff that can be done in the research labs but maybe there isn't that much stuff to be brought out and we're forcing it, which is leading to bad returns. Interesting hypothesis. Not sure I agree or disagree, but it's, it's one I think that we have to sort of look at and uh, take seriously. The second is just the, you know, does the inv current investment risk return model, as we understand it, 
Does it still work for life sciences? Or is it somehow fundamentally broken or we have some sort of fundamental disequilibrium that we have to address to have a long-term sustainable industry? And then finally, um, and this came from uh, somebody from Big Pharma who will be speaking here today. That would be Barbara. Uh, there was the notion that uh, maybe we just, for really hard diseases like Alzheimer's and, uh, you know, where the fundamental science has not gone as far as maybe, you know, that we're ready to bring stuff to commercialization. Um, maybe the industry is industry. Maybe Big Pharma should be thinking about how it operates differently. And if it did, what impact would that have on the venture community and uh, small biotechs and emerging companies? So those are sort of three questions, but they're intended um, just to start us off. <laughs>